morning to you. Welcome to Asake Online. My name is Zenzel Ndegele, and this is the Breakfast Club. Uh, in the past year or so, uh, we've been talking about uh, voter registration, uh, delimitation. Uh, now people are talking about census and uh, the number of people in Bulawayo and, and other areas. All these things are linked to the process of uh, election that will be held in 2023. I know uh, we always argue a lot on social media and sometimes we don't really get time to look at uh, the details, the numbers, the processes. And we still have uh, quite a number of people who are not registered to vote, but we will still complain when the results come out and say they didn't go our way or very few people voted or it was rigged and all those kind of things. Elections are a process and we need to monitor and be aware of all the processes that uh, happen in the election cycle because it is not a one-day event. It's not just uh, the election day and the counting. A lot of things happen before that and after that. And today in our program, we will be talking to Ndota Nando, who is the ZESNI uh, Regional Officer for Material Land. And we want to uh, get more from him about the processes that, they are go that are going on. We know ZESNI is involved a lot uh, in elections, in election monitoring, and they have the information around these elections. Babundo, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Babundo. Maybe my first question to you will be, uh, give us an overview of the, 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 the bars and the voter registration process that has been going on. How has been the process? Uh, thank you, Babundo. Um, I think e e voter registration, we know there has been uh, two blitz uh, that happened uh, sometime before uh, this year. And... Um, also, we know that voter registration is a continuous process. According to Zimbabwean constitution, Zeg is supposed to register people continuously. And um, the voter registration uh, continuation uh, continues, especially in Zeg uh, district and provincial offices uh, between the working hours Monday to Friday. At some point, uh, Zeg sometimes go down to the people, goes closer to the people in what they call uh, blitz or mobile, like, like I've just said. Uh, I know the last one was around uh, April 30 or so. So in voter registration, you know that uh, people's details are being taken down and uh, are used to compile a voter's role. And the people who are being registered are Zimbabwean citizens who hold a uh, Zimbabwean ID, uh, or let me say who are citizens of Zimbabwe who are 18 and above. So generally, uh, when the voters' role is compiled, it is used for many purposes. One, it can be used for the purposes of election, so that uh, there is one man, one vote. And um, again, like, like now we are talking about delimitation, it's also uh, the same uh, very big book that is used for the purposes of uh, drawing and redrawing electoral boundaries. Yeah, uh, someone might say, I know we always talk about delimitation and the number of people don't really understand it. What is the link between delimitation and voter registration? Um, yes, there, there is a link. Uh, delimitation is drawn or is conducted using the voter registration population. People who register to vote and they are in the voters' roll are the people that Zimbabwe Electoral Commission used to to draw boundaries. As we speak now, we know that the voters' role for delimitation was closed um, on May 30 uh, for the purposes of exactly to its calculations and the mathematics so that it comes up with um, the correct boundaries, the correct number of constituencies and wards. As we know that uh, Section um, 160 of the Constitution they talk of Zimbabwe uh, having 210 uh, constituencies. So those 210 constituencies um, come out or that they are premised on the number of registered voters. Yeah, I think people need to understand that uh, come next year, the, I mean, the election, uh, despite the number of people who voted in Bulai or, or registered to vote in Matele, there will still be 210 constituencies. And the question is, I'm a constituent with Lawa Amar. Because Lawa might have three or four or nine. And I'm a so if people don't register to vote, it means constituencies basically move from their area to other areas. And that affects everything. 
That, that's exactly Mr. Ndebel. Um, lo looking at the performance of the registered voters in Bulawayo and Matebele and in general, there are high chances that uh, some of the constituencies in Matebele land, let me call Matebele land, will be moved to other areas where people registered in numbers because the 210 is constitutional and it has to remain 210. So the, there is a mathematics that they play around to say for you to get the number of registered voters per constituents or to establish uh, what we call a constituency, they divide, it to, uh, they divide the number of registered voters by 210. And as things stand now, I think we have uh, around 5.8 million plus thereabouts that have registered by 30 May, from back 2017, 2018 to 30 May, and they divide that number by 210. So roughly you'll, you'll get something like 27,000 thereabouts. Um, I, I didn't actually do the, cal the calculation specifically. So meaning that a, a standard constitution will have about 27,000 people. And then um, according to the law, ZEC is allowed to vary. 20% downwards and 20% um, upwards. So that uh, roughly there is about uh, the minimum of around 21 something to a maximum of 32 or so registered voters. That constitute a, a constituency. So if you look at the number of registered people in Bulawayo that uh, are registered by 30 May, I think they are, for now, they are around 270,914 thereabouts. So what it means is that uh, if you divide that by 27,000, you, your, your answer should be around nine, 10 constituencies. It might depend on some other variables, but uh, the 12 we might not be able to get. And uh, those that have been taken away from Bulawayo, you know Harare has uh, uh, greatly registered people. So maybe they're moving into Harare or some other provinces. Yeah. For me, I find that there's a link between uh, or a link the number of registered voters that we have in Bulawayo and the results of the census that we just announced. I know the day before yesterday, the day the debate is still going on, people feel like, you know, Bulawayo we have more people. Others are actually saying Bulawayo is 1.2 million people. And I'm saying, if census results were wrong, let's assume they're wrong by mm. 5 to 10 percent. Yes. But if they were very wrong, the number of registered voters would they prove which we have more people go now? But if you are taking into consideration that we have about 250,000 registered voters in Bulawa, and census says we have 600,000, it's reasonable in the fact that the census lab are counting everyone from one day to 100 years. Yes. So the 400,000 would constitute the unregistered voters and those that are below 18. So why, if we have so many people in Bulawa? And material, why are they not registered in the vote if we claim Uguti Svane? Because it, 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 there is a pattern there. The number of registered voters, the number of constituencies that we are going to get, and the center. So I think we need to do more than complaining and prove otherwise. I was having an argument with other comrades. I think it was in relation to number students and us. Okay. And people were saying, no, let's encourage people and us to go and register to vote. And I was saying to them, no, but our elections are polling station based. So I'm a student and us, now as we register, and the elections happen during the, the holiday mostly. The majority of them come outside Bulawayo, So they won't mm. be there to register to vote. Maybe explain to us the system, we are polling station based in the Uti. You cannot go and vote where you have not registered. Yes, exactly. Uh, Zimbabwe is a representative democracy. And that's why we have this delimitation that set up the, the constitu constitu constituencies, wards, and the polling stations where people go and register. And uh, when you register to vote, they usually use your address, and that address will give you your polling station your constituents and uh, eventually your polling station. So about our student and us, like we are saying, Guti, I, I strongly believe 90% of them are coming from outside Bulawayo or Matepeleland. Uh, looking at Bulawayo, it means that even if they register, their names will be posted to their areas of residence. Some are coming from Victoria Falls, Gwanda, Manikal and Chinoy and so on. So 
registering will only benefit their areas, not in Bulawayo. That, that's basically because when you register, you are posted to your, to your area and you also assigned a polling station in that particular area. Um, yes, people in Bulawayo, Bengabai, one million or so, but I always think that Bulawayo is a metropolitan e population in Yankona. It's very fluid, plus um, most of the people who might be coming here, they are coming here for business and uh, they are registered wherever they are coming from, Mutare, Manikali, and wherever, Mashallah, and Central. So, looking by way of eye to say we are many here, spending Laba, why Abandaba registered, Beba Luchwana, uh, may not be very scientific, uh, according to me. So, like you are saying that the relationship between the people that are counted in census and, and the, because the census will give us, generally give us the, the number of people who are 18 and above and who are eligible to, to register to vote in a particular area. So really the number of registered voters besides other factors to say about then they are no longer interested in issues of elections, issues of governance because they think it doesn't actually bring any change that they desire. They are just reluctant to go and register. Like you are saying, the, maybe the 400 and something or maybe the other 200 and something are those people who are reluctant. But those that are here physically, we, we may not scientifically prove that uh, they, they, they really reside in Bulawayo or they are really resident in Bulawayo. But they are resident in terms of business and other factors, but they are registered somewhere. There is also the issue of the, the youth vote. Every election mm. we talk about the youth will decide the future, the youth vote will change this election. How many election time may the youth uh, know to, to be seen? And uh, usually it's inspired by what happens in other areas. First, it was the, 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 the you know, uh, Tunisian the Arab Springs and the role of the youths, then the Zambian election and the role of the youths. Have we seen an increase in the number of youths who are registered to vote this uh, blitz and, 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 and the previous one? Uh, my discussion with the people from ZEC um, revealed that not much expected youth they have come up to register. Um, the reasons are many, but uh, maybe we may just hazard them because we are not really sure. But the major one, it has not, no issues of elections have not brought change. Issues of elections have not brought, change. Since 1980, issues of elections have not brought employment. They are, they are coming out of colleges, very educated, ready for the employment, but nothing is coming out for them. At the end of the day, Baba Nama Windy with their master's degrees and whatever, Abanye Bang and Agu Vending, and the most of them, but Bakwabanisa. So instead of Utiba and Berriches to go vote in Tabakaba and Gutaiba and Neti, they would rather hustle and get money and so that they put foot on the table. Ogunya, of course, quite a number of them like um, uh, affected by the, the historic events you will discover they don't have the required documents. Is there 16, 17, 18? That, that the particular person still doesn't have a, a certificate, neither does the person have an ID. So, without those documents, I'll never register. But anyway, you, you, you are like, is not a citizen of Zimbabwe. So, there are actually so many reasons, but most of them are issues of bread and butter issues. Yeah, I mean, there was, uh, I know there, there, there was a blitz where the, the registrar's office went in communities and they were saying with the, they reduced the requirements, people can register. Did we see an increment in people getting IDs or still the same? Um, people are getting IDs, but looking at the previous reg uh, ZEC registration blitz, ERG is a Pumanga at the same time, Lo ERG. Right, so you'll discover that those who didn't have documents were not able to register to vote because they still had to queue at the RRG's offices. Then after that, RRG uh, went out, I think sometime in April. Um, people went to register. And then as we speak now, they are still out until I think it's September. Yes, they are registering, but now ZEC is no longer close to them. They have to get an ID, pants, but still have to travel to Cholocho to go and, and, and register to vote. 
and uh, looking at issues of money, issues of employment, we are just So I'm a youth, there are quite a number because of relaxation, they might have had a chance to take AMA IDs and they are still taking AMA IDs. Uh, but Zek is no longer out, closer to the people. They still have to look for money that they, they can't find anywhere to go and register my district offices, my provincial offices. So in number, I have a civil my youth, uh, according to some discussion that I had with some people, uh, it hasn't come up to the expected. So, so the challenge that we have is that these two processes happened separately. Uh, now the registrar's office, when they gave IDs, when the blitz had already happened. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so they, it was going to be easier if you get your ID, you go and register. But still now, because you find that in town here, people argue with you on a, yeah, and so we call the park and then say register for more. Mm -hmm. So the exactly. facilities where people are registering are far from people. And mm -hmm. yet, in Eskati, Zeki is a the county park. The registrar's office was nowhere was to not, be seen. Was nowhere to be yeah. seen. Yeah, exactly. There was a time in one meeting where people uh, encouraged Zek to, to, to actually decentralize, to actually move out of Famona and have district offices, like have an office in Pumola, Luvev, and so on, so that when RG is out, then after taking the IT, you know, Umundu would have used a lot of money to travel from uh, Kautra Park to, to, to go and get an IT, say, Elapan. And so it would be easier, would it, even Kwambana Gomsitel? You, 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 you have maybe a tent or an office here, Zek. But things are not always uh, happening the same because those are two different departments. So our policies, our programs may not uh, allow that. But that's the ideal. Where there's RG, there should be Zek. Oh, oh, some people argue that when I take the IT, why can't it be automatic that I'm, I'm, when I'm 18 or when I get 18, I'm quickly moved into the voter's role. But there are other dynamics, like now we're using the PVR, the biometric voter registration, where they, they, they can't just move your name into the voter's role without the other features that the voter's role require. So actually, there needs to be a synchronization, a serious synchronization, if we really want to get um, people into the voter's role. But again, there will be an argument, would you register to vote is your right, you are not forced. So it's, your, it's an option that you need to take. It's a, it's a responsibility that you need to take because you want to pattern person of the governance, governance issues. Yeah, it's not like you, you must. It's not like you must, yeah. exactly. So we, we, we mainly talking about Lao and Matsubelen, but you, as you just know, you work in other areas as well. But what has been, compared to maybe just from talking to our Yabasubelen that was in that, what has been the response in other uh, provinces when it comes to issue of water registration? Uh, other provinces are performing very, very well. Like if you look at Arara, I think it's almost a million now. Um, the, the argument will be, is it that the Arara people are more concerned about uh, governance and election issues more than the Ulawa people or what? But uh, other provinces are performing very well. Uh, you know pretty well that the, the results of the delimitation voters roll that ended 30 May, it really shows what the is the least and the Parent South is... I think it's, it's the last, 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 followed by Blaue, right down there. Martin was a little bit better, it was it's ranging around 340,000. But uh, then you compare with the Oarare, Mashonal, and Central, and so on, they, they, they are doing very well. Then you tend to wonder what, what, what's happening down here. Is it a, a question of what is it or what? But uh, we have been on the ground for quite some time. And even what kind of water education efforts that we do as CSOs, uh, there is a lot of resistance. I told one person, which I think if water education going down to the people, is actually a waste of time. The best would be, because you can't tell the person, when you spoil the ballot, you are actually wasting your energy. You are actually making your preferred candidate lose on the street or a combi, like what we mostly do. That can be. I want to remember now, I think they want some form of organized meetings and workshops so that they actually learn the, the, the tricks and dynamics of issues of elections and governance. 
Everything will be in the so trauma, Galatia, Amasu, the loyal in one now. So I always <laughs> ask myself, I don't go loyal, because if you look at Matabel in North, Matabel in South, and Budawai, the combined waters are less than a half. Exactly. But we want a steak on the table. Exactly. So how do we have a stake on the table in terms of uh, whether it's power distribution, in terms of MPs, when we are actually not having the numbers? Because it means any political party that is national can ignore the three provinces and still win yes. the, 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 the presidential and majority in parliament comfortably. You are very right. Uh, it's, it's so disheartening. But I think... Why Benjalo, they have been neglected for quite some time and they don't see a benefit of being part and parcel of the governance. That, that's my view. But what we need to know is that uh, when we talk about democracy, we are talking about the Umbusu Abantu, Abantu, and the Abantu Bangkona Bangasa participating. Then Ansagwa's Guzo participate in the very democracy. Like you rightfully say, um, the, the way Esiegela and I will participate, we end up with the resources of the resources down getting her. Why should our MPs be men and given a lot of resources when, in actual fact, we don't want to be part and parcel of Ili Malankwan? As we speak now, we count up, we are happy, maybe we, we, we are able to be granted a, a, a constituency status as, as a ward 28. And they may be presumably to also have to have even more wards and more councillors. That, that would be super. So that when, when, when people are given resources, when service delivery is issued out, then it's going to many people. It's not shared. So definitely, if you want to, like election, we are talking about numbers. People will focus where there are people who are participating. So Tina services bulalang up in the side. Yeah, I mean, uh, some time ago when I was still a young person growing up, I met a business person in Nigeria and asked him enthusiastically, so when are you coming to invest in Zimbabwe? <laughs> he said, my friend, come into Zimbabwe to do what? <laughs> uh, there are 10 million people in Zimbabwe, there are 30 million in Lagos. <laughs> so <laughs> so why, why should I come so to Zimbabwe? Why should I? Yeah. I so this is it's about numbers. Exactly. Elections yeah. about numbers, governance about numbers, and the winning is about numbers despite the fact that the uh, election is a game of law. As we, 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 we conclude, what's your, what's your advice? What, what can be done to make sure that uh, we, we turn the tide? Because we've been talking about this. 20, I don't know, 2013, there were a lot of campaigns around youth uh, registration. 2018, we've been doing the same. It's now like, because numbers really went down around 2008. How do we turn this tide? How do we get young people to be involved? How do we get everyone else? <coughs> Recently, when we were going around the rural areas, I met someone in Matopo who says they last voted in um, 1995. How do we get these people to realize that uh, not voting is actually voting? Yeah, um, your last statement is very powerful. And Nguna uh, Zelila is an individual and a person working on issues of elections and governance. We cannot rule out that people are misinformed, people have no information. We need to up our voter education uh, efforts and um, make sure, like I was saying, we It's actually a waste of time. I remember the last voter education program that we did, we, we had to use uh, calendars to entice them to listen to us. What you, you pretend like you're giving somebody a calendar and you're carrying quite a number of them. And somebody says, ah, let me calendar your phone. Then they group up, then you start educating them for five minutes. Five minutes. And you're educating somebody who is not even interested, you're just waiting for the cadet. So I think the best is to up the, 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 the voter education program and they make sure that people are put in a formal way and educated. I know we, we have done that, but normally we usually do it with the um, civic society networks, but we haven't actually done public meetings or public, uh, what were public formal meetings 
that will take even two, three days so that we really educate the people. And the other thing I'm just, I think is, the, is to encourage the, the, the populace of Matepele and Nguti, like you rightfully said, and what does that mean? It means that one, you are supporting the status quo. If there were 10 people who have always been voting honestly, and there are 100 people who have not been who have not been voting. So it means the leaders that we have are only the leaders that we are being chosen by 10 people. And if we don't come up in numbers, we will never have our own leaders. So I think participation uh, needs to be encouraged. And the people need to know that if you want to change, and the change uh, comes from participation. That's why some people say, be the change that you want it to be. If you want to be many, come in numbers. If you want to vote for your preferred candidate, come in numbers for that pre the preferred candidate. And if you're not registered to vote, you can't. Uh, on that uh, note, uh, thank you for uh, coming in and sharing with us uh, this information. This was uh, Ndota Nandro, who is the Zestin Regional Officer for Materialland. And in our program today, we're talking about the importance of voting, the processes that are going on. Usually, I like posting on Facebook, on Twitter, social media, uh, talking about elections and voting. And people say, ah, but who vote up the elections are rigged. And I ask myself, so who have voted? Have we seen change? by not voting. Because we, we, we cannot be you know, in protest mode forever. At one point, we then we need to realize that uh, we, 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 we can make change if we have the numbers. And in our, unfortunately, if we, 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 we really stick together, register, and come up with a resolution to say, these are the councillors that we want, and this is that why we are going to determine uh, change in a, in, a, in a certain way. But by just saying we're not going to vote, we're not going to do anything. Well, five years, ten years from now, we'll still be talking about the same thing, lack of development, complaining about ABCD. I am really appealing to the community, to the elders, to the young people, oh, can we sit down as a people and ask ourselves, what is it that we want? And how are we going to achieve that? Because as it is now, I think our member table in the Slatlegi, we are directing this. See, Papa and without looking for a moral compass and the political compass, uh, five generations from now, we'll still be talking about marginalization, economically, politically, and socially. I think it's time we wake up and ask ourselves what is it that we want to do and how we're going to achieve it. My name is Angel Ndebele. Till we meet again in another program. Have a good day.